You've just stumbled upon the definitive guide to teaching your students Adobe Premiere Pro in the classroom. I'm gonna show you in this video everything you need to do to introduce your kids how to use Adobe Premiere Pro for video projects. Hi there, my name is David Basulto. I'm a media arts instructor at San Marino High School. I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro since it first came out. It is now an industry leading tool in Hollywood, in commercial land, and everywhere. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to show your kids how to use this tool. And you might not even use it now because you didn't know you had it. If you have classes like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator where your people are doing design, chances are you have the Adobe Creative Cloud, and Premiere Pro is one of those tools in the cloud. So without further ado, let's dive into Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so we're in Adobe Premiere Pro now, and I wanna just go through the interface with you. It's really simple to learn. Um, it's, it looks daunting at first, maybe, because there's so many bells and whistles, but once we get the hang of it, it's gonna be really easy. So right away here, I'm in the home screen. I can go to a new project, which we will do in a moment. Um, I can go down here and click on learn and that's going to take me to this page here which has all kinds of video tutorials that if people can dive into like here's a specific one on uh, adjust the timing of your edits I mean you can just go as, as deep into it as you want but to get the kids to just start learning how to edit in this tool is what we're here to accomplish giving them the basics because I guarantee you they're going to start to explore on their own and they're gonna say, hey, what does this do? I just did this, and what is, how do I get back to this? You know, so we'll dive into that. So I'm gonna click on the home screen again. Here is uh, all my projects I have, and then here is the new project button, which we'll click on in a moment. On the left-hand side here, you've got team projects. We're not gonna get into team projects. And another one that says open Premiere Pro Rush uh, project, which there will be another separate video on that because Adobe Premiere Pro has an iPhone, iPad, and Android app called Premiere Rush. So if all the kids are in your, uh, in your school district are using the Creative Cloud, they have access to it, which we do in our district, the kids can download uh, Premiere Rush for free on their device and use their devices to create awesome videos with it. Once they're done with it, they can save it to the cloud and open it up in Premiere Pro. It's pretty powerful. Uh, but first things first, let's learn the basics. So I'm going to click on new project here and I'm going to call this project basketball. And I'll show you why in a moment. And here's a bunch of different things that we have uh, over on the left here. So in, actually in the middle here, we can select things that we want to bring into our video and it'll put them all into the timeline for you, etc. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to select a new project right here and I'm gonna click on create on the far right side. Once I've gotten in here, let me turn a couple of things off here so I won't confuse you. We're gonna get rid of that and I'll show you why and how we'll turn them on in the future. And then we're going to, uh, I'm gonna go into this area here. And so this is what you will see. That other one was my workflow, which you may wanna to change to. So you're gonna see four panels here, and we're gonna start on the top left. This is the source monitor. Inside the source monitor, you're gonna see your clips that we've imported, uh, photos, videos, music, audio files, whatever, will be up there, and we're gonna do all of our editing usually in this area. Uh, underneath that is the import project panel. So the project panel holds all the assets of the uh, project that you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I can double click in this. I can press Command I, um, or I can go to the top here and go File and then Import. So I'm used to just double clicking in here. It opens all this up. I'm gonna go to my desktop here and I have uh, something called Basketball and I'm gonna drag these two clips in. So the footage I'm using today is from this book, uh, Adobe um, Classroom in a Book, by my friend Maxim Jago. Um, he's a brilliant Premiere user, and he creates these books every year. So um, 
I took some footage from it. And if you want to, you can, it's great to have this book for your classroom because it's got a lot of assets in it that you can use to help the students learn how to do these types of things. So my students absolutely do this uh, when we can dive in. So I'm giving you the step-by-step -step of what we do. So I've got two pieces of footage in here now. Um, next to that, let's just go through these tabs here really quickly. You've got the media browser. So now I can look all over the place to see where I have footage. Uh, I've got libraries and libraries are more for if we have uh, titles um, that are pre-made or we have logos and stuff like that. So we make our, we can make a library for all that stuff. Usually the kids don't really need to get into that. So, um, but this is something that you should know. You just click on create new library and you start to add assets to it. Uh, so maybe the school logo, maybe you're doing a news team and you have certain lower thirds and certain logos, all that stuff can be in here. Next to that is info. So if I have something selected in here, uh, I don't know if I'll do that really quick. Uh, so like I said, I went back and selected the piece of footage. I go to info, it tells me all about it. It's uh, 1280 by 720, 16-bit, um, 2997 is the, is the frame rate. So it tells you all the information on that. Next to that is a tab we will be doing a lot of work in is the effects tab. And in here, you've got presets, you've got uh, color correcting things here, you've got your audio and, and video transitions and effects. And so we will be diving into that. One thing I like to do once the kids learn the basics of this is to let them kind of be free and go ahead and start editing and testing things out. It's one of the best ways to learn how to use things. Next to that are markers. Um, so we're not gonna get into markers right now, but if you press the letter M on the timeline, it'll set up a little marker there for you so that you can put some information there. Maybe um, uh, remind yourself to do uh, add some green screen here, or this is where a logo goes or whatever. And you got the history panel. Right now you see in the top here, I've opened a new project and then I imported clips. And as we start doing steps, it's gonna put more and more down the history. And I can go back to that history at any time. Um, so that's something good to know for later. So I'm gonna go back to the project panel for now. And let me um, double click on drive to basket. Double clicking on it brought it up into the uh, project, uh, the source panel up here. So in the source panel, there's some other things that we're gonna take a look at. I can now scrub across, right? I can just let it play. Uh, these two uh, indicators here allow me to drag video only or drag audio only. So sometimes you may need that. And uh, right here, it says mark in. So uh, I like to teach the kids I for in and O for out. That way they can learn how to use shortcuts to make edits. Um, and that's kind of all we need from here. Uh, all these other things we'll get into momentarily. Uh, underneath that, if I click on the effects controls, this is gonna give me all the effects controls, which we'll look at in a minute, and audio and metadata. Um, I don't get into that at all, not even with the advanced kids because they don't, it's just a lot to learn at this stage. Uh, but basically you can put in all kinds of different data. Rights management would go here. Who owns the rights to these things? Um, you know, Dublin Core, who's the contributor? These are, all, these are just tons of information that will be embedded onto all of this stuff. And then there's a speech analysis, which it can analyze text. Uh, like let's say we have a script or something going with this, um, it would work together. But metadata is really um, a lot to do for, these, uh, for the students, so I don't get into it yet. Um, so we're just gonna take a look at this guy. He's dribbling here. Let me just play this clip really quickly. He's dribbling, a little shaky at first. And he's getting ready to dive. It's a little dark. So he dive, drives, drives in the basket. There it is. Okay. So I want to show them some basics of editing. So I'm going to bring this back here until he starts to drive. And let's just scroll through it a little bit. And right about here, he's about to go. So I'm going to press the letter I for my input. And I'm going to go until he gets to about right here and I'm gonna press the letter O. Okay, so now I've got some options where I can just click on hold this and drag it down into this timeline where we're gonna do all of our final stuff. 
and let it go. I can also, before we start going down here, click on new item, and here's what's called a sequence. So the sequence panel there holds all the stuff that we're editing that, that are, have been cut and clipped and are now part of our final project. So that's where everything goes. It's the timeline of the whole project. And you can have them do it uh, pr uh, prior. So if I go, if I click on this, now we have to get into what different sizes they are, with what kind of footage, et cetera, and you name it. Uh, but I like to start them off grabbing the footage and, and just making their first clip, dragging it into the timeline down here, and it's going to automatically make the sequence, the timeline, in the same size as the video. So we are good to go. As you can see, here it is. Over on the right, I can see that that's the audio there, and there's some big bounces. So, okay, we're good. So now I want to make a continuation edit here. So I'm going to go into the left here and I'm going to go into under basket. And now if we remember, if I go to the right here, there's the ball. So we just go, I can use the right and left arrow keys to move back and forth frames. So I'm going to go one here. So that's where we're kind of at the end. So now I'm going to scroll through scroll through here's the guy right there the ball it's right there let's see right about there i like that matchup i'm gonna press the letter i and then we're gonna let it go down a little bit till it gets into the end of the uh net we're gonna press the letter o and then i'm gonna drag that down as my second scene so now let's play the, the endings here just to see if we're looking good. Let's go back a little bit. It's dribbling, balls up, there it is. Looks pretty good to me. Balls up, right? Uh, let me see his hand, where's his hand? Okay, so I'm actually, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna select this piece of footage here and now I can just drag the end of it when this little cursor comes up and go to the right. Or let me press Command Z. I can go to the tools here and choose C, the letter C for the razor tool or the cut tool. And now I can cut that and now press the letter V or uh, go back here and click on this. This is a selection tool. And I'm going to select this and get rid of it. And then in between here, if I right click, it's going to ripple delete. And there it is. So I kind of like this better. Let's see. So he's up here. The ball's falling. His hand's down almost. Yeah, see how it's down there? Now it's down there. That works out good for me. The ball falls through the net there. Let's go back one more time to drive to basket. And we were here. So let's play a little bit. The ball about right there. I'm going to press the I key and there it is. And he's done and we'll just end it there. Now I'm going to drag this in here and I can do that. Let me just show you something else. If I have my cursor at the very end of the video here, you can drag, you can click and hold. See the little hand now I can go to the right. And I can go insert before the timeline, the time indicator, insert after the time indicator. There's also overwrite, replace, and all of these are self-explanatory. Wherever I have that blue line, the current time indicator is where uh, the video is going to go. So I'm going to import after, and there it goes, right where I wanted it to do. So let's go about here. He's driving to the basket. He goes up, it goes in, and it falls. Perfect. So you're showing them how to do a continuation cut of a scene and how to use different uh, angles and whatnot. So that's the basics of editing in Premiere Pro. Um, import your footage, um, bring them into the timeline. So you have the current time indicator uh, and then start to make your cuts and then play it through. Let them tighten things up. Let them move things around. Let them play with the tools in here the razor tool or the letter C, the selection tool, um, all that stuff. So that's it for this video to get things started. 
In the next video, we're gonna start fooling around with some color correction and some titles. Thank you.